Hey, family and friends, come on in, guys. We are about to have... Hey, Stephanie Pascal, I see you. Hey, Miss Betty, how you guys doing out there? Thank you so much for joining in. We are going to have a very interesting Bible study tonight. Tonight's topic is, hey, Janet, how you guys doing? What's up, bro? I see you, my man. What's up? We are going to have a very good Bible study tonight. Tonight's topic is overcoming life's issues. This is going to be really good. Um, I want to, hey, Janet, I want you guys to go ahead and get your Bibles um, and follow me along this path right here today that I'm going to set. I'm, I'm speaking about overcoming life's issues. God bless you, Mother Betty. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining in. We are going to have an interesting Bible study tonight. I, I got this word from the Lord today, and I can't wait to share it with you. I am not at the salon. I am home today doing something different. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this different scenery here. Um, I'm going to wait for a little bit. Tell me, tell me this. Uh, you guys out there, where are you tuning in from? Thomas Haskins, I see you. Nina, God bless you. God bless you. Tell me where you're tuning in from. I want to shout out your city. Lanika, I love you, girl. I see you. We are going to have an awesome Bible study tonight. I promise you. Get your Bibles. Hey, Shafanda, God bless you. Get your Bibles. Today's topic, tonight's topic is overcoming life's issues. The topic for tonight is overcoming life's issues. Let me shout out your city. Put up there. With RVA, I see you, RVA. Richmond, Virginia is in the building. What's up, Richmond? South side of Richmond. I see you. South side of Richmond. Where else? Who else is tuning in? Where are you tuning in from? Where else? Where else? Before we get started, where else? I want to shout out your town, your city. Is it is it Virginia only in the house? We don't have anything else in any other cities? Just Virginia? Okay. All right. I wanted to shout out your city, but if it's only Virginia, then Virginia is dominating. All right. T-R-V-A. What's, what's going on, my man? I see you. I see you. Transformation RVA. God bless you. We're going to have an awesome <clears throat> Bible study tonight. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a word of prayer. What's up, MD? Marilyn, I miss you too, brother. God bless you. <clears throat> I want to encourage you guys to share this video. Okay, I got you, Mother Betty. Cool. I want to encourage you guys to share this video. I'm speaking about overcoming Kansas. What's up, Kansas? Kansas is in the building. Kansas. Wow. What's up, man? That's awesome. Keita Lewis in Kansas. God bless you. Today's topic is overcoming life's issues. I'm going to give some wisdom tonight. So get ready to learn something amazing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. And we come to you, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your angels who are with us. We thank you that you're going to give us insight on how to overcome life's issues. We are ready to receive from you, O oh God. And we thank you for spending time with us today. Holy Spirit, I yield to your wisdom. I yield to your counsel. You are the teacher. I am a mere vessel. Have your way with me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hey, Ebony. I'm going to share with you guys how to overcome life's issues. And I'm going to the book of Mark chapter five, and I'm going to read from verse 22 to 34. And I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version. What I'm talking about, hey, Anthony, God bless you guys. What I'm talking about tonight is very important. This story that I'm going to dissect tonight it's about a woman in the Bible who had, had an issue of blood. Hey, Rhonda, God bless you. This woman in the Bible for 12 years had an issue. And it came a point where she overcame the issue. So tonight I want to dissect this story as Holy Spirit 
will lead me to do. So grab your Bibles and follow me. It's not on the screen because I'm at home, so I'm doing it differently today. Thank you, Ebony. That's perfect. Look what it says. Then one of the rulers of the synagogue, synagogue came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he prostrated himself at his feet. That's worship. He begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. And Jesus went with him and a great crowd following him and pressed him from all sides. So as almost to suffocate him. And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years. Get ready. This woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Get ready. And had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not better, but instead she grew worse. She heard the reports concerning Jesus and she came up behind him in the throng in the crowd and she touched his garment for she kept saying if I only touch his garments I shall be restored to health and immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment verse 30 and Jesus recognizing in himself that the power preceded him from him had gone forth, turned around immediately in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And the disciples kept saying to him, you see all the crowd pressing hard on you, around you from all sides. And you ask this question, who touched your clothes? Oh, I love this. Still. He kept looking around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what she had done for her, thought, though alarmed and frightened and trembling, fell down before him. She worshiped him. And she told him the truth. Lord, help me with this. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, trust, your trust and confidence in me, springing from your faith in God, has restored your health. Go into, go in into peace and be continually healed, be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. Lord, have mercy. Y'all ready? Here we go. Here is a woman. For 12 years, she has an issue. And she's trying everywhere to go. She's trying natural means to get herself healed. And everywhere she goes, she's getting worse. And she's broke now because she spent all her money looking for healing in the wrong place. Lord, I can park my car right there. There are some people out there who are looking to get healed. They're looking for a sense of healing, a relief from natural means. But just like this woman, you cannot get healed from natural means. What you have to do is you have to stop looking at people and keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on, come on. Y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. This woman was looking all over, looking at doctors, going here, going there, looking to get healed. And the Bible says that she got worse because she had an ailment that a regular person could not heal. Somebody give me hashtag wisdom, please. I'm getting started. So what happened was she, Lord have mercy. She kept looking for healing in places that made it worse for her. But before I go any further, I want to show you something. Isn't it absolutely amazing that we know about this woman we know about her ailments. We know about her, her issues, but we don't know her name. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy. Boy, you better watch it. I'm about to go. 
What do you do when your issues become so big that your issues become your name? Lord, help me. Jesus, I, the, I mean, the wisdom is already flowing. See, there's somebody out there that you made your issue so big that you lost your name. You are stuck in the issue. No longer are you, let's say, Sheila. No longer are you, say, let's say, Jonathan. No, you are known by your issue. Lord, help me. It's because you made your issue so big because you took your eyes off of Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Glory to God. What do you do? When you take your eyes off of Jesus and nobody around, nobody around sees you for who you, who you really are. They see you based on your issues. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, have mercy. There is time for somebody out there. I don't know who I'm talking to. But if you lost your name, come on, stay with me now. If you lost your identity, come on, don't play around with this. Share this video now. If you lost your name, and if you lost your identity, it's time for you to divorce the thing and get married to Jesus where your issues no longer control who you are and how they see you. Lord, help me, God Almighty. The issue was so big that the Bible speaks about the issue, speaks about how long she was sick, speaks about her economic situation. And the Bible never tells us her name. Lord, God Almighty. Oh, when you make the issue so big, you lose your identity. And the sickness, the disease, the harm, the, 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 mental, the mental anguish, the, the low self-esteem, the fear, the doubt becomes your name. Oh, oh. But the Bible says, that this woman heard, oh boy, let me tell you what can change your issues. She heard, she didn't see, come on, y'all stay with me, y'all stay with me. The Bible says that she heard about Jesus. She didn't see Jesus, come on, come on, don't play around with me on this. See, some of us are looking, Shay, Shay, Ebony, some of us are looking for Jesus, but you're not going to get healed looking for Jesus. You got to have your faith in place to get healed. So when something is tormenting you, you got to hear about Jesus. Oh, wisdom. How does faith come? Come on, come on, come on, come on. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. It don't come by seeing. Because what you can, what you see can deceive you, but what you hear, come on, your hearing is more important than your vision. Come on, come on. Antonio Shea, the Bible says that this woman heard about Jesus. Now watch this, Janet. Watch this. My love, Trina, watch this. When she heard about Jesus. She said out of her mouth. What she heard impacted her speech. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Faith comes by hearing. But when she heard about Jesus, it changed her speech. She says, if I can just touch the hem, I don't even need to touch him. I don't need to touch Jesus. Let me just touch what he's wearing. Come on. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time. Let me just, let me just, I, I'm telling you, you know how I get what wisdom hit me. The Bible says that she heard about Jesus. And, and then when she heard, what she heard changed. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. And what she heard changed her conversation. And she said, if I can just touch the hem. I don't need to see him. I don't need to touch him. If I can just touch what he touches. Let me tell you something right now. Here is the hem of his garment. Lord, help me today with this revelation. Y'all better get this. Some of us are waiting to get healed. Some of us are looking for a breakthrough. Some of us are looking for a miracle. And all you got to do is touch the Bible. Because the Bible is the hem of his garment. 
actually, if I can be honest with you, the Bible is Jesus himself. And she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And then she did something that went against law. It went against what people thought. Oh, I'm going to teach you. When you need to get your breakthrough, when you need to get your healing, you better not be moved by the crowd. Don't be moved by, by what people think about you or how you may look. Because Jewish law says the woman was unclean because she was bleeding. That's the reason why she didn't see Jesus. She heard about Jesus because she wasn't privileged to be in the crowd. Lord, help me. God Almighty. Whoa. What do you do when you're not privileged to be in the crowd and the crowd don't embrace you, but you got to confront the crowd to get your healing? Oh, Jesus Christ. Do you worry about how you look to people, what they think about you? Or do you just say, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they think. I got to get to Jesus. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This is what the woman had to do with the issue. Antonio, the issue was so amazing that the issue separated her from family and friends. The issue was so big that nobody, come on, Janet, I'm, I'm there. The issue was so big that family and and friends isolated her from society. She was an outcast, not because she did something wrong, but because of the issue that she could not overcome within her own strength. And instead of people praying for her, instead of family members bringing Jesus to her, they told her, stay away because your issues don't qualify you for healing. Lord Jesus. Do you not know that family and friends and loved ones will isolate you based on issues? What do you do when everybody is around and they, they are standing between you and your healing? Do you press through or do you stay there hoping, wishing and praying? Do you go against law? Do you go against the law for your healing? This woman said to herself, the Bible says that she said to herself over and over and over again, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, the issue would no longer be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this right here, right now. Janet, this woman had nobody else to talk to. Families turned their back on her. Friends turned their back on her. People who say they loved her and had her back turned their back on her. And the only person she had was herself. Let me help you. How to break through your issues. You better talk your way through it. You got it, number one. Write this down. Number one, how to break through your issues. Number one, you got to build up your faith. Turn off the TV. Turn off the radio. Don't talk to no one who doesn't build up your faith. Don't listen to anything that doesn't build up your faith when you have a lingering issue. Lord, have mercy. Got to build up your faith, number one. She heard about Jesus, that's faith. 
And then number two, she spoke to herself. She said, if, number two, she spoke to herself. She said, if I can just touch the hem, she spoke to herself. Number two, come on, write this down. She spoke to her, when nobody else was talking, she spoke to herself. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She talked herself into doing something that went against law and went against what people would think. Number three, when you are dealing with a lingering issue or an issue, you can't worry about what people think about you. You can't worry about how you look. If you worry about what people think about you, if you worry about how you look, then you'll stay bound and you will never be set free. So then she made a move and she left her house. Stay with me. Please stay with me on this. When this woman left her house, Lord have mercy. Somebody please give me hashtag wisdom. I'm, I'm, about, I'm, about, I'm about to go. Holy Spirit, I love you. I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you that you share with me the way you do. I'm humbled by you. And I love you. When this woman left her house, she was very weak because she was bleeding for 12 consecutive years. And because of the constant bleeding, it made her very weak. Please hear me on this. She did not walk. She did not walk to Jesus. Mark, mom, Anthony, she did not walk to Jesus. Actually, what she did was she got on all fours and she crawled to him. She had no power to walk. She was too weak to walk. But she didn't care what it took to get there. She got on all fours, hands and knees, and she walked to Jesus on hands and knees. Here is the wisdom. Somebody give me hashtag wisdom, please. If she would have walked to Jesus, the people would have saw her and they would have stopped her because they would have told her, you don't belong among us. You belong in your house because you are an unclean person. Lord, have mercy. So the wisdom is, <laughs> when she dared to deal with the issue, the very thing that could have killed her really helped her out because she pressed through it. She did not stand and walk. <sighs> Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy. She got on her knees and hands and she crawled to Jesus like a baby and nobody saw her because she was in the number four. When you went through an issue and you need healing, you got to press. I don't care if you got to crawl on your hands and knees. Whatever your position is, don't let anything stop you between you and your miracle. Go ahead and get it. I don't care if you have to be on your knees. Go and get it. Number five. Number five. When she got on her knees, she kept saying, if I can touch his heart, the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. That humility that she displayed gave her the strength to press. Number five, humility. The humility that she had gave her the strength to press and not care what nobody said. Now watch this. Watch this. 
everybody around. Come on, stay with me. Stay with me. Everybody around is trying to get to Jesus. She is on the outside. Everybody is already in position to be where Jesus is. Everybody is in position to touch Jesus. Watch me on this now. <laughs> there are people outside the crowd that can't get in. Because they all had the same positioning. They all was pressing. And they all stood up. But in her humble state. The Red Sea was parted. Lord have mercy. People for some reason gave way. And she pressed through the crowd. And people on the back could not get to Jesus. Because they weren't humble enough to get to Jesus. This woman, in her sickness, in her issues, humbled herself. Come on, don't, give me hashtag wisdom. Come on now. She humbled herself and she pressed and she made it to the front of the line and she touched Jesus. Lord, have mercy. When she touched him, she was such in faith. She wanted the healing so bad that when she touched him, power left his body. Come on, man. How bad do you want your breakthrough? Do you want your breakthrough so bad that you are willing to take a different position despite what the crowd is doing? Are you willing to take a different position Take a different approach. When you take it, you will find yourself in the front of the line instead of the back of the line. See, it's your positioning. In your positioning is your breakthrough. In your positioning is your miracle. In your positioning is your touching. See, many of us are too, let's say prideful. We got too much pride. And, and, and with that pride, we are approaching something standing versus being on our knees. Lord, help me. Did I just... Oh, Jesus Christ. There are some things that you need to approach the Lord with that you should not be standing on. I'm going to stay here one second because I feel Holy Spirit. There are some things that we are standing on that we really should be crawling up. There are some things that we are standing on that we really should be on our knees and hands about and crawling about. But because we are so prideful, we are in the back of the crowd and all we need to do is change our positioning. Get on your knees, crawl, humble yourself and press. That's the word. Come on, get on your knees, crawl, humble yourself and press. I like that Holy Spirit. Come on, get on your knees. Crawl. Humble yourself and press. And when you do that, the crowd can't hold you because the crowd can't see you. The crowd is looking at you up here and the reason why they would miss you is because you're down here. And humility is the gateway for your breakthrough. There are some things that you need to get on your knees for. And crawl. And press. And humble yourself. But you refuse to get on your knees. And what you're doing is you're standing up. But there's some things that God says, I don't need you to stand for this. I need you on your knees. And I hear Holy Spirit say... That this woman wasn't the only one who was on her knees. I would hear Holy Spirit said that Jesus was also on his knees. When he pressed through Calvary. See this. Oh, Lord have mercy. Your biggest breakthroughs. Your biggest, your biggest breakthroughs are going to require you to be on your knees. Because humility 
is the key to open the doors of heaven. How do I know this? Because Jesus humbled himself to the point of death. Come on, man. Come on. And he humbled himself when he cried out on the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them for they not know what they are doing. Listen, he didn't have to do it. He could have called angels and shut the whole thing down. But he humbled himself. And that's the reason why he's king and Lord. That's the path to take. When you are dealing with life issues, you'll get frustrated with God. You don't become prideful in the eyes of God. You humble yourself before the Lord. And you stay on your knees for however long it takes. And you say to the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, just as you heal that woman with that issue, you can also heal me with my issues. Why? Because I'm taking the same steps that she took. I'm taking the same steps that Jesus took when he had to crawl. Jesus had to crawl on that cross at Calvary. What I see through the realm of the spirit is that your biggest miracles and breakthroughs have to come into a place where you're going to press through some things despite what the crowd thinks about you. I know you may have a college degree. I know that. I know you may think highly of yourself. I know that. I know you may have a reputation. I know that people may look up to you. But it's not in you. It's in the humility of the Lordship. Think about this. This woman could have stoned, she could have been stoned to death because she was unclean. And she should not have been out of her house. And for 12 years, she was alone, suicidal and depressed. And she said to herself, this breakthrough that I need, cannot be something that I'm standing on. It must be something that I bow down to and I crawl to. And I have to do this because if I can just touch his garment and listen to where the garment is, it's not on the top of him. It's not on the arms of him. The garment's on the bottom. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy, revelation. God, I love you, Holy Spirit. The garment that Jesus had, the hem of this garment is on the bottom. So this is symbolic. Somebody give me wisdom. I'm in this thing, man. The symbolic thing of this is here. He was wearing a talit, man. And the hem of it was on the bottom. And Jesus said, Come on, man. I'm going to heal you. But I'm going to heal you when you change your position. Come down. Not because I want to embarrass you. Not because I want to make you feel less than. But I want to show you the power of humility. Some of us are missing our healing. Because of pride and anger. And we're not humble enough to get on our knees and say, Lord, I just want to touch your garment. And some of us are so prideful that we lost our name and now we are known by the issue. Look at him. He's always mad. Look at her. She got a bad attitude. You lost your name. Because you don't change your position. You're too prideful. Look at him. He's a drunk. Look at him. She out there running these streets. See, the issue became so big that you won't change your position. But look what happened. The Bible said that immediately 
when she touched his garment and immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. It wasn't dried up anywhere else. It was dried up at the source. When? Immediately. Why? Because she changed her position. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. Verse 34. And he said to her daughter, your faith, your faith, your trust and confidence in me springing from your faith in God has restored you to health. Go in into peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. I'm about to close this out. Because this woman changed her positioning, not only was she healed, but she was continually healed. And look what accompanied her. When she changed her position and she touched his garment, listen to what I'm saying now. Stress left her and peace overtook her. Lord have mercy. Oh, Jesus, if you just get this. If you just get this, please hear me. I'm going to say it again. Look what he gave her. When she got healed, the stress that she had for 12 years left and peace overtook her. And look what it said. She was overtaken by peace Watch me now. Watch me on this, please. She was overtaken by peace continually. It wasn't a one-time healing. It was a continuous healing. She got healed every single day because peace overcame the stress. How would you like to be overtaken by peace every single day. Let me help you. God has given me and I give him all praise. Supernatural peace. I have supernatural peace. For years, I was this woman. I had an issue for years. You don't understand. I had an issue for years. I was an arrogant person. I was, I, I mean, I had an ego and pride and all of this stuff, emotional. I was led by things of the earth and of the world. And when I was stripped because of the disease, I was stripped and I was an outcast. I had to do what she did. This is why I'm trying to give you this. I'm just saying for play. I did it when I humbled myself and I said, Lord, I am failing at life. I'm failing at a, as a husband. I'm failing as a father. I'm failing in all areas. I said, I need you to heal me. I am going to humble myself. And if you don't heal me, I am going to die of stress. This is for real. And I, there was a time that I got on my floor and I simulated what she did. I crawled 
on my floor in my house and I touched his garment and I said, Lord, who Jesus, I said, Lord, ah, I want somebody to get healed tonight. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. I did what she did. Honest. I got on my knees and I crawled on my knees. I was in a weakened state. I was failing in everything I could imagine. And I got on my knees and I said, Lord, if you don't heal me now, I would not be made whole. And I said, just as you heal this woman who was desperate for a touch, I am also desperate for a touch. I said, Lord, if you don't touch me right now, as I am touching you, it's over. And I got up. And I walked in faith. I said, I know I'm healed because you healed her. And I'm desperate. And I'm laying down my pride. I'm laying down my ego. And I'm telling you that I'm lost without you. When I came to that realization, the person that you are seeing today emerged. This person was buried in the illness. I had an issue. I was bleeding just like her, like many of us are. And what I had to do was I had to humble myself and submit to this right here. And when I did it, I became a different person. The role was tough. It was challenging, but he healed me because I allowed him to do what he always wanted to do. I could have been healed year one, but I waited for year 12 to say I am tired. I don't know who I'm talking to out there. But you're not going to get healed until you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when you really get sick and tired, you don't care what your mother thinks, what your father thinks, what your cousin thinks. You don't care what nobody thinks because you got to get to Jesus. You got to get to Jesus. And he's waiting on you to get on your knees. And walk in the path of deliverance. If you let your pride in the way. Like I did. That issue won't leave you. But when you get on your knees and walk towards the Lord. What he does is he removes the stress and the ailment. And he gives you continually continuous healing. And what accompanies that everyday healing is the peace of God that transcends all understanding. God of your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, your Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your peace to overcome everyone who is viewing this right now and everyone who would view this video down the road. Father, I pray for a supernatural peace that you promise. The same peace that you gave this woman, a continuous peace. Father, we need it now. And Father, we now yield and humble ourselves. We change our position. Just like Jairus did when he was prostrate before you, this woman also did it. And just as you healed Jairus' daughter when he was laid out before you, and you healed this woman when she was laid out before you. Father, right now, we lay down all pride, all egos, all anger, all fears, and we just lay before you. And Father, we touch your garment now. We thank you, Father, as we touch your garment, that we are made whole. Father, we need you. We need your touch. Heal our hearts. Heal our spirits. Heal our minds. Heal our bodies. Heal us in every sense of the word. As we humble ourselves in positioning 
pressing through the crowd, reaching for the helm of Jesus' garment. We thank you for it now. We thank you that even tonight we're going to sleep like babies because your angels encamp themselves round about us. We thank you for supernatural healing and continuous peace. Receive it now, family. Receive the peace of God. Receive the peace of God. Stretch your hands out and touch it. I mean, simulate it now. Take your hands and, I mean, just reach and touch. The garment is there. Just come down. Your, your heart is the positioning of humility and touch it. There's someone now who has been tormented. You have been tormented over a bad relationship. And you are having an issue of overcoming this relationship that has wounded you. You have been wounded by a bad relationship. This thing has really hurt you. And this thing is stopping you from moving forward. There's somebody out there who has been held up because of hurting based on a bad relationship, a disappointment. Right now, if you just humble yourself and reach, I promise you, it's going to leave you just like that. I'm telling you, there's a miracle happening right now. I want to pray against resentment, unforgiveness, hatred. I want to pray against that now. I want us who are holding on to any issues that's lingering of hatred, of, of hurt and pain, release it now. All you have to do to get healed of this ailment is reach for his garment. Say, Father, right now, I am touching, I am touching the helm of his garment right now. Therefore, I am healed. Confess that. Come on. I am touching right now, right now, right now. Come on, right now, come on, right now. I am touching the helm of his garment. Therefore, I am set free. I am praying for broken heart. I am praying for emotional issues right now. I am praying for emotional issues, emotion, broken hearts right now, broken hearts right now. Be healed in Jesus name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I am praying for mental issues where your mind is running wild and coming against you. I, I come against that now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the peace of God. Come on, raise your hands with me. I pray for the peace of God that transcends all understanding to guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I pray for a guarded heart and a guarded mind in Christ Jesus. And any issues right now in the name of Jesus, if there's a woman out there who has an issue of blood, and I've done this before several times in, in, in this ministry, if there's a woman right now who has an issue of blood with her cycle, right now, under the anointing, you are healed right now. It dries up just like that. If there's a woman right now who has a lingering issue of blood, a cramping, a woman who has terrible cycles, when your cycle is there, you have terrible cramps and heavy bleeding, you are healed right now under the anointing. I did this before. A woman had an issue in the name of Jesus. She was bleeding and I prayed the same prayer. She went to the bathroom and it was gone. Dried up on the spot in the name of Jesus. If he did it before, he'll do it now. I pray for supernatural healing over your household. I pray for a young man who is struggling over his father not being in his life right now. In the name of Jesus, son. In the name of Jesus, your father God is with you. Your father God loves you. And I pray for God to touch your heart right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say that tonight you're going to sleep like a baby. I hear the Lord say that tonight you're going to experience supernatural rest, sweet rest and sound rest. And the Lord is going to visit many of you in your sleep tonight. You're going to feel a supernatural presence around you tonight. It's the Lord in Jesus name. You're going to sense him tonight strongly. I decree it in the name of the Lord. And you're going to testify that you 
had an encounter with the true living God. There's going to be a supernatural, because when he heals you, the reward is continual peace. You see, that's how you know you're healed. You're no longer stressed or distressed. There's peace. I love you all. I pray for you all. And if there's anything I can do for you, I'm here. I am serving. I'm, I am here to serve you all. And I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you all for trusting me and for supporting me and for allowing me to do what God would have me to do. And that's teach and, 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 and inspire and share based on his wisdom. I am humbled by your support. I am humbled by you trusting the God in me. And I promise you this, that as long as I live, I would never let you down. I would never disappoint you. I would always intercede for you. I would always have your best interest. I promise you with all of my heart, because I want you to get it. I want you to get it. I want you to get it so bad. I would do anything for you to get it. You get it? I would do anything for you to get it. I'm going to teach this thing. I'm going to teach the truth. I'm going to go against the grain. I don't care. I'm going to do what nobody else says to do. I'm going to do what people think. I'm going to press. I'm going to go against the crowd. I'm going to do whatever I have to do for you to get it. I don't care how I look. I will scream. I will shout. I will look stupid doing it. I don't care. Once you get it, I'm rewarded. We give God all honor, praise, and glory. And we thank the Holy Spirit for being awesome. I love you all with the love of God. And I'm going to see you all on Sunday. I have an awesome message on Sunday. I'm speaking about divine rest. You don't want to miss this message on Sunday. I am speaking about divine rest. Oh, wait till you hear something. I'm going to, if you think this sets you free, I'm going to show you something that you've never seen before when it comes to rest. And after you get this on Sunday, you will never again be stressed. You'll rest moving forward, I promise you. I love you with the love of God. I see you guys on Sunday at 1010. God bless you. Peace.